What faith is, and what does the Bible say about what is faith? In our Bible study and prayers today, we will be looking at what faith is. And in the follow-up edition, we shall also look at what faith is not. Okay. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this great privilege and opportunity to share your word. Dear Father, let your word that is about to come out truly be from your mind, as you have quickened and imprinted it in our spirit. In the end, Lord, let your name be glorified and your people superabundantly blessed, in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. As far as a believer is concerned, faith is a very important factor. As a matter of fact, our salvation as believers hinges on our faith. The Bible did not mince words either in defining or stating the importance of faith. According to the scriptures, with faith, all things are possible. In Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. But still, there are a lot of folks out there who have faith or claim to have faith but without results. And the question becomes, is something wrong with their faith, or are the scriptures lying? But we know that it is impossible for God to lie. Hebrews 6 verse 18 says, that by two immutable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. Therefore, there had got to be something wrong with the faith of the individuals. Or that the individual doesn't understand what faith is and how faith works, or that what the individual may be having is real biblical faith. This, therefore, necessitated the clarification of what faith is and is not. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible defines faith. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This definition is the classical definition of what faith is. But beyond that, you have got to know and understand that there are certain components that get our faiths working, and without them, faith may be impotent or dormant. The Bible makes this clear, even with examples and illustrations. In James chapter 2, from verses 18 to 26, it says, But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works, and not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. One can clearly deduce that any faith not backed by work is considered a dead faith, and like anything dead, you can't expect it to produce. It therefore, goes to mean that what some people have is dead faith, even though they may think they have faith. Just like the case of demand. Effective demand is the demand that is backed up by the ability to pay. And when a demand is not backed up by ability, it becomes an ineffective demand. And even so, it is with faith. When faith is not backed by or mixed with work, 
it is a dead faith and will be incapable of producing. But what about if faith is not dead but yet is not working? Then it has to be checked against other components and combinations that make faith work. Now, what are these other components that we need to combine with faith to make it effective and work like explosives? The Bible did not leave us in ignorance of all that. For it says in Galatians 5 verse 6, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. What this means is that faith combined with love is capable of anything without the help or recourse of such inconsequential and non-essential matters with respect to salvation and new birth like circumcision. So one cardinal ingredient of faith that will make our faith work like fire and at the speed of light is love. Before we ask for or act in faith, our actions should or have to be born out of love if we expect God to honor our faith with results. Love is highly essential and efficacious in every matter that has to do with our faith as believers. As a matter of fact, the Bible elevates love above every other Christian virtue you can think of. It says in 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, from verses 1 to 13, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind, love does not envy, love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail, whether there are tongues, they will cease, whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. So these three things continue forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Now, how can anything of the Spirit ever work in the absence of such a spiritual essential? It will definitely be difficult, if not impossible. Other factors that make faith work can still be subsumed under love, because, with love, those factors are already taken care of. One is a clear conscience. You can see this in 1 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 9. Where the Bible says, With a clear conscience they must follow the secret of the faith that God made known to us. Next to that is the declaration. You believe it, you have got to say or declare it if you must see it. In Mark chapter 11, verse 23, the Bible says, For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So faith works by declaration. For until you say it, you are not permitted to see it. In Numbers, chapter 14, verse 28, the Bible says, Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, 
just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. So those are basically the determinants of the efficiency and effectiveness of our faith. And when they are all in place and correctly placed, our faith becomes explosive and irrepressible, and our prayers become undeniable and expeditious. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, King of Glory, thank you for the grace, privilege, and opportunity to give your word. Lord, I pray for everyone whose faith has been dormant, weak, inoperative, and impotent. Lord, by the reason of this teaching, let such faith catch fire and begin to work like fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for those whose faiths are dead, Lord, may they be quickened by this teaching and prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for those who lack faith, Lord, let this teaching and prayer instill faith in them, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, dear Father, for your answer, for with thanksgiving I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Amen.